Don't hate me, this might be kind of a hot take, but maybe Sachiko wasn't the worst person in Nana. So in this video, I'm going to talk about Ayazawa's iconic manga and anime, Nana. Nana is one of my favorite animes and mangas. I love Ayazawa and her stories and art really elevate what a manga is capable of when telling a story out of our own reality. So something I see often is hate being thrown in a couple of directions towards specific characters from the series. But no hatred in this fandom seems quite as strong and undivided to me as the hate and scorn Sachiko gets. First, let me summarize Nana real quick so we're all on the same page, but really this video won't make much sense if you haven't seen or read Nana. If you like romance and realistic comics, I recommend you try and read it. The comic ran from July 2000 to June 2009. I started to read it around the time it was put on hiatus. I really hope one day there is a resolution to the series. The series Nana is about the lives of two girls, both named Nana, who meet on a train to Tokyo when they both uproot their lives from their small towns and decide to move there. Nana Osaki is a punk rock singer who is strong and independent. Nana Komatsu is fashionable, mostly kind, but very emotional and has never been on her own before. The two talk on the train but then separate when they reach Tokyo. Happenstance kicks in when by pure luck they both meet up again when they are touring the same apartment they both hope to rent because it's cheap. They decide to become roommates to make the rent even cheaper and an unlikely but close friendship forms between them. The rest of the series follows their friends, relationships, and successes and failures as they try to navigate life as 20-somethings in Tokyo. Nana Osaki wants to be a punk rock star, and Nana Komatsu, affectionately nicknamed Hachi, dreams of romantic fulfillment. Things become more and more dramatic as they not only grow closer, but find some of their dreams coming true, and others crashing and burning. It's a really great series with compelling characters and beautiful art. Sadly, Ayazawa has had some sort of illness and the series remains unfinished. So back to the Sachiko hate train. The entire reason Hachi moves to Tokyo is to be with her friends from home who moved there to go to art school and her boyfriend Shoji, who also moved to go to art school. Sachiko is the other woman in a triangle between Shoji, Hachi, and Sachiko. After weeks of friendship and flirting between Shoji and Sachiko, Shoji cheats on Hachi with Sachiko. So immediately it's obvious why so many people despise Sachiko. And I get it, I really do. She is the one who causes one of the two main characters' boyfriends to cheat on her. But here's where I take issue with the hatred. I don't think Sachiko is completely to blame, and I think Shoji is actually more in the wrong than Sachiko. I'm in no way saying she shouldn't have any blame, but maybe not as much as Shoji. I'll try to break this down into points just to keep my argument clear, but I'm kind of going off the cuff here so this might turn into a muddled mess and an argument full of contradictions. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> So my first thing that I think of is Hachi and Shoji as a couple. So maybe I'm in the minority here, but I think Shoji and Hachi never had a super great relationship. Their attraction seems mostly to be about the physical attraction and looks, and although they are friends at one point, I never see them really connecting all that deeply. I think they got along really well at first, but for most of the relationship, they were apart. Shoji never even really tells Hachi he loves her, and they are together for over a year. Hachi seems insecure with the relationship from the moment she moves to Tokyo, accusing Shoji of having a secret fancy city girlfriend, ironically named Sachiko. At this point in the story, Shoji is not cheating on her, and even though Hachi is sort of joking, it kind of seems strange to me that she was that nervous that quickly. Also, I find it weird that Shoji doesn't tell her the reason he is working so much is to buy a computer. Maybe my relationships are weird, and that's why I think this, but it seems like something that would have been mentioned. Also, he is very harsh with Hachiko early on, 
and acts like her moving to Tokyo to be with her friends and him is a dumb idea and just kind of puts her down. We never really see him act that way towards Sachiko. Maybe he learned his lesson, but I think Hachiko kind of annoyed him. Also, he says that a girl and a guy can't be friends and he is mad at Hachiko when she friend zones him, which kind of gives nice guy energy, but he is totally fine with at least trying for Sachiko, but maybe he knew that they would end up being more and he was nicer to her because Sachiko never bruised his ego as Hachi did. Still, yuck. So how about next Sunday? I think I can make it, yeah. Great! Oh, by the way, you know what happened yesterday? Hmm? What? Hmm. What are you saying? That's crazy! <laughs> no, I'm serious! It's true! <laughs> you need to be more careful how you choose your friends. Yeah, well, she's always been a nice girl. Are you kidding me? Ow! Yo. Uh. Hmm. But in contrast, Sachiko and Shoji really appear to be better friends. They talk about a lot of things, and Shoji is much gentler to Sachiko than he is with Hachi. At a point before they cheat on Hachi, Shoji is heard talking to Sachiko about her friend's issues in a jovial manner. I feel that Shoji and Sachiko are just a better couple. It is also revealed they go to the same art school and have the same major. The energy between them just seems so much more organic than Hachi and he ever do, in my opinion. He even says to Jun that being with Sachiko makes him feel at peace. Does this give him the right to cheat on Hachi? No, absolutely not. But it is definitely something to consider. Shoji isn't overly welcome to Hachi when she comes to Tokyo. You would think that he would immediately tell her to stay with him. And he does eventually, but he never really seemed that excited about it. I'm pretty sure him and Sachiko almost instantly move in together after they become official. Am I imagining this? As things go further and further into him knowing Sachiko, he seems even less interested in Hachi. This is where a good person would break it off with Hachi and date Sachiko with no problems. Hachi would have been hurt, but not totally betrayed. But we all know what happens. Stupid Shoji doesn't do this. As much as I don't like what Shoji does, I found it to be realistic. I saw this happen a lot with other people's relationships back when I was about their age. It was not right, but cheating happens, especially when you are young. But back to Shoji, I get the impression that he cheated on Hachi for about two weeks, which is a little excessive and really marks him as selfish and a coward in my eyes. But also, he seems young and inexperienced with relationships. I know he didn't want to hurt Hachi, but he ends up hurting Sachiko and Hachi with his actions. Shoji doesn't even apologize to Hachi until way later in the series, and when he does, he tries to pin the reason their relationship ended on Hachi at first. It's really dumb, but by the end of the reunion, they happen to meet at a restaurant Shoji frequents. He really does apologize sincerely, so I guess he does grow from what happened, but the reunion is kind of bittersweet. You can tell there is still a lot of hurt between them. My next point is, with Sachiko, it's not personal. So this situation would be very different if Sachiko knew Hachi, or if they were all in the same friend group. Sachiko has no idea that Shoji has a girlfriend at first because he is sneaky and omits this information from their conversations. Hey Matsuda, any idea where Shoji is? Have you seen him yet today? Yeah, I was with him just now, but then he bumped into some girl he knew. Looked like they needed to talk, so I went on ahead and left them alone. Oh, really? Huh? It's not like that. I'm pretty sure it wasn't his girlfriend. Try not to worry about it. <laughs> Listen, Matsuda, it's not like that between me and Shoji. We're just good friends, that's all. <laughs> Who do you think you're trying to fool? It's totally obvious you like him. To be honest, I thought you guys were already seeing each other when I first met you. Then when I found out Shoji had a girlfriend, I was kind of surprised it wasn't you. Yeah. I only discovered that about him recently. It kind of took me by surprise as he well. He never told you? That is so lame of him. You shouldn't be hiding that. He didn't. I just assumed he was single and never actually asked him. You're so sweet to make excuses for him. All that she knows at first is a cute guy works with her, and then they became friends, and then they have a lot of obvious chemistry and common interests. She makes a move by wearing shoes that make them both miss the train. She is obviously hoping that they will have to head home together. Then she finds out for sure he has a girlfriend. She rightly tries to separate herself from him and won't even take cab fare from him, but she really values their friendship and doesn't want to not be friends with him anymore. But also she has feelings with him. She already loves him even though he has a partner. Then one night a little later on both of them get caught up in the moment and cheat on Hachi. 
This is the reason Sajiko does suck. She did sleep with another girl's man, and she doesn't end things with Shoji even after this happens, so it's not only a one-time mistake. Pretty bad, but I think other people in the series behave much worse to people that they know and supposedly care about. But in Sachiko's mind, Hachi is an abstract thing. She doesn't know what she looks like, her name, or really anything about her. It's easy to do shitty things when you don't have a concrete understanding or knowledge of who you are hurting. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm just saying it is easy sometimes. I think even the best of us could get caught up in a situation like this, especially when there is romantic tension and sexual attraction involved, and even more likely this could happen when you are young. Remember, Sachiko is, I believe, only 18. To Sachiko, the situation is not a personal slight to Hachi, it's just her feelings getting in the way of doing the right thing. But Shoji, on the other hand, is doing a very personally hurtful thing and continues to do it for a while. He knows Hachi and cared for her at least at some point. He was her friend first. He knows about her bad luck with the older married man she saw before dating him and how deeply that hurt her. He is also aware that Hachi is superstitious and believes in the demon lord and that the demon lord is messing with her life. And even worse, he knows she is at least a little scared he will cheat on her. And even worse than that even, the name Hachi gives this hypothetical person she cheats on is Sachiko. I'm not going to blame Shoji for breaking up with Hachi. Relationships end all the time. But the fact that he did the one thing Hachi expressly told him that she was afraid of seems especially cruel. I really feel like he was also telling Sachiko lies at some point too, even though this is not shown. It's kind of like a headcanon that I have. My next point is, it might be messed up, but Sachiko does take responsibility for her actions, sort of. Sachiko was really humanized to me when she finally sees Hachi in person in the restaurant she and Shoji work at. She sees Hachi and drops a glass and cuts her hand picking it up. Hachi comes over and helps her with the cut. Sachiko immediately realizes that she has done a terrible thing cheating with Shoji. She finally sees that Hachi is a real person, a seemingly nice person. She immediately runs outside in tears. Shoji sees her run out, but he is a coward hiding from the situation in the bathroom or whatever. He finds Sachiko out back crying. She tells him that they need to stop hurting Hachi immediately and tells him she was wrong for clinging on to him and that he needs to be good to Hachi. She not only tells him that she won't cheat anymore, but takes responsibility for her role in cheating. I believe she truly would have ended things with Shoji right there. You can see her saying this as being manipulative to force Shoji to choose her over Hachi, but I think her feelings did seem genuine, and I truly think she felt bad. Again, she takes responsibility when Hachi sees her and Shoji hugging in the parking lot, and he coldly tells Hachi that Sachiko is his girlfriend. Sachiko tells an enraged Nana O oh to hit her and not Shoji because she should have stopped it from happening. She admits to her fault. I personally don't feel like she should have defended Shoji, but it was obvious that she felt pretty guilty. She doesn't really apologize per se, which I wish she would have, but she does kind of admit that she is wrong, which is more than Shoji does until much later. And I think she doesn't know Hachi, so maybe saying sorry would be a little out of line and maybe even seem hollow. I find her to be a better and braver person than Shoji. The next point I wanted to bring up is the secretly evil innocent girl. I think there's this trope about girls who seem or look innocent being secretly evil, and Sachiko's design made her look very young and innocent. I read the most hilarious descriptions people give to Sachiko, including ball head and child prostitute. <laughs> I think Sachiko is a cute looking character, but I might be biased because I'm a short girl with a huge forehead and micro bangs. Her head is very round, I'll admit, and she's very short and delicate and has large eyes. She's also younger than most of the main cast. I think all this together makes her appear sweet, but we the reader want to think she's nefarious under that sweet guise. I think part of this might be due to cute aggression. I think it also might be partly because people are cynical and do not trust a person who seems sweet and happy. Sachiko is designed to be tiny and cute, chipper and spunky. I think this is kind of annoying to a lot of readers because we see Shoji getting close to her and we don't like it. It seems like she has evil plans and that maybe the whole cute happy alt girl thing it's just an act to lure him in or something. I'm going to go on a slight tangent, but I also think women are taught from an early age that other women often are a competition and that other women are always out to attack, hurt, or betray each other. So very often when relationships end because our partners, male, female, or other, become attracted to someone else, 
we assume the other person stole them from us. This narrative is very prevalent among women, so I think most people see Sachiko and don't see her as an admittedly flawed human, but instead some evil one-dimensional villain, when really circumstances just worked out that she was more compatible with Shoji than Hachi. Again, they should not have cheated on Hachi. But things like this happen, and I don't think Sachiko was plotting to hurt someone or steal someone from someone else, but she just kind of fell in love and didn't take the proper steps to enter the relationship in a healthy or fair way. Shoji doesn't belong to Hachi. He is not an object, so Sachiko can't really steal him. Shoji is a human and his affections simply changed. I will again say the thing that Shoji and Sachiko did to Hachi was very gross and immature. It was 100% wrong. But I'm just trying to say I don't think that it was Sachiko's intention from the beginning. Again, she didn't even know that Hachi existed at first. She still had feelings for him after she knew he had a girlfriend, but I think she had already fallen for him before she really knew for sure. Is Sachiko the villain? Is Sachiko a villain? I think the answer is yes, kind of. She definitely did some hurtful things and behaved inappropriately. She should have told Shoji to break up with his girlfriend instead of ignoring the issue and continuing to cheat on Hachi. But in the end, I don't think she is some evil mastermind. I think she is maybe not the best person morally, but I find the trespasses of other characters a lot worse in the later parts of the series. I know some people like his character and I will admit he is excellently written, but to me, Takumi is more of a villain than Sachiko. I'm aware of a lot of people hate him too, but I feel like it is more deserved than Sachiko, honestly. From what I gathered, Takumi cheated on Hachi even when they were married, and in the final release chapters of the manga, Takumi and Hachi are separated. He is in London with a young Ren and it is shown that Reira is with them. I even feel like Hachi does some really messed up things later in the series, but she gets away with it because she is the main character. By the way, Hachi is my favorite character in the series, so trust me, it hurts me a lot to see her get treated poorly. I'm not a monster, I swear. Heck, even Reira is pretty problematic to me. First of all, she is sleeping with an underage person, and secondly, she continues to want Takumi even after he is married, which is much worse than the Shoji and Hachi situation will ever be. Also, Jun is pretty terrible to Hachi during the situation that happens with Shoji. Jun is supposed to be her best friend, and she pretty much tells Hachi it's her fault that Shoji cheated on her. They may not have been a great couple, and maybe Hachi did things to drive Shoji off, but it was definitely not her fault that Shoji cheated. I understand that Jun is friends with Shoji too, but she was like standing up for Shoji's behavior which I think is horrible and so hurtful. She also told Hachi that she was selfish and inconsiderate. Even if Hachi was behaving poorly, she did not deserve to be betrayed by her boyfriend. I think the way Jun acted is actually worse than Sachiko's behavior in some ways. Also, Jun knew about Sachiko and never told Hachi. I think a true friend would have, even if it caused drama in the friend group. Jun could have at least told Shoji to fess up immediately, or she would tell Hachi, but she is so passive and stupid in this situation. She tells him to stop seeing Sachiko at least, but he doesn't listen to her, so I'm glad Jun did kind of a nice thing. I understand her need to stay out of Shoji and Hachi's drama, but personally, I would not have allowed someone to treat a friend this way without saying something more, even if the other person was my friend as well, but maybe that's just me. I know I'm in the minority with these opinions, but I thought I would make a video on this because I'm surprised by how much everyone hates Sachiko. Like, the venom people spit at her is amazing. But I also credit this to Izawa for her excellent storytelling. People are so invested in the story and characters that a large fan base still consumes and talks about Nana 13 years after it stopped being updated. She makes people care about Nana and Hachi Nana so much that some people really seem like they would fight to keep them happy and safe. But I get it, they are little cinnamon rolls. Well, that's my two cents about Sachiko from the series Nana. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know what you think in the comments. I would love to hear everyone's thoughts. Just keep it nice. Remember, this is just a comic book. Nobody has to get all bent out of shape about it. It's just fun to have discourse. Do you hate Sachiko the most? Who is your favorite Nana character? Do you think it will ever be finished? Thank you for watching the video. Have a great day or night and see you later. I'm also going to link another video about Shoji and Sachiko and how they aren't the worst below if you want to see more about this topic. Ashling out!